Hello friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I was recently inspired by a YouTube video created by a wonderful woman by the name of Margaret Manning. Margaret is the founder of the online site 60 and Me. Now I know that many of you know Margaret and are part of the 60 and Me community. But for those of you who aren't familiar with Margaret 60 and Me site, I hope you'll give it a chance and check it out. I've included a link to it in the description box below. This 21 questions makeup edition video that Margaret created was what's called a tag video, which means that many different people on YouTube created a video on the same topic. The tag was started by a really wonderful young beauty blogger by the name of Allie Glines. And Margaret felt that some beauty bloggers over the age of 60 should also respond to the interesting questions on this tag. I definitely agree. Hence, today's video. I'll be answering 21 questions on a variety of makeup topics, ranging from the most underrated makeup product I own to the makeup product that I cannot live without, to my hopes for the future for older women and makeup. And I hope this video will get you thinking about these questions as well. There are definitely some questions that I think will jog some fun memories for you. And by the way, I've included links to Margaret's and Allie's videos in the description box. And you can find videos by other YouTubers on this very same topic by just typing 21 questions makeup edition in the YouTube search bar. If you're new to my channel, welcome and a warm welcome to those of you who are returning as well. My name is Elise and I'm a professional working makeup artist who's passionate about helping those of us who are over 50 look like the very best version of ourselves. You'll find new videos every Thursday and if you haven't done so already, I do hope you'll subscribe and join our family. And I thank you so much in advance if you decide to do so. So let's go ahead and dive into those questions. Question number one is, what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? Well, I'm embarrassed to say that I have some Revlon lipsticks in my collection that probably date back more than 10 years. Now, I don't wear them and I know I should toss them out, but for some reason, I just can't bring myself to part with them. Somehow they just feel like old friends that I need to keep with me. The next question is, what is your most recent makeup purchase? Well, you know how some of our favorite products get discontinued? Well, not too long ago, I found a lipstick that I really loved from Huda Beauty. It's called After Party. Now, many of you know that I love a great luminous lipstick. And this one not only is luminous, but it has a metallic quality, which I love. And frankly, which is difficult to find. This is what it looks like, and I'll swatch it for you. But when I was checking out something else on the Sephora website, I noticed that this lipstick was on sale. Well, we all know what that usually means, right? Well, warning bells go off in our head and we immediately think that the product is going to be discontinued. So I ordered two more, as well as one more of the color called Cake Day, which I also love. Here's the Cake Day color. And here's a swatch of it below after party. As you can see, it's a beautiful, vibrant pink. Question number three is, what is the first makeup product that you ever purchased? Well, I remember so vividly, and boy, does this memory go back a very long time. It was deemed acceptable by my parents and by the parents of most of the other girls I knew to start wearing lipstick in eighth grade. So that first purchase was, of course, a Revlon lipstick. Question number four brings back a really embarrassing memory, quite honestly. The question is, what is the makeup trend that you used to love, but hate now? Do you remember that trend in the 80s for bright turquoise eyeshadow? Well, I remember wearing it one day over my entire eyelid area to work. And one of the guys in our graphic design department said to me, why are you wearing that awful eyeshadow? Well, tact definitely wasn't Dave's strong point, but he did have a point and was right. I will use some turquoise eyeshadow from time to time now, but I'm a little bit more strategic in where and how I apply it. The next question is, what is the makeup trend that you used to hate, but now you love? Now, I must admit that before I became a makeup artist, I had absolutely no interest in or use for contouring products. Now, because of the beautiful definition that I know contouring can create and the changes happening in the area of my own jowls, 
I am very grateful for the smoke and mirrors help of a great dark cream contour stick. The sixth question is, what is your favorite step in your makeup routine? Well, my immediate first thought was powder eyeshadow application, since I absolutely love playing with different colors. But the step that really gives me the greatest sense of satisfaction is applying foundation. I still feel rather amazed when I see the difference between how my face looks with foundation and how it looks without foundation. It's really quite astonishing what a difference it makes to recreate that even skin tone that we used to have. In fact, there's research that confirms that evening out our skin tone can do more than anything else to help us look our best. Wearing foundation literally shaves off years. This next question is really a difficult one for me. It's, what is the makeup product that you cannot live without? Well, maybe this goes back to my early days with Revlon lipsticks, but I just need to have some lovely luminous color on my lips. Question eight is, what sparked your love for makeup? Well, I hold Seventeen magazine totally responsible. Do any of you remember the model Colleen Corby, who used to appear frequently on the cover of Seventeen magazine? I think her makeup looks really inspired me. In fact, she appeared on the cover of Seventeen magazine a whopping 15 times, and she's now 73 years old. Oh my gosh, that does not seem possible. This next question also brings back a head-shaking memory. It's, what is the worst makeup look you've ever done? Well, you know how in years gone by, you could stop in for a special event at a makeup counter where there would be makeup artists on hand and they would do your makeup for you? Well, this particular makeup artist did a green eyeshadow look, which I later tried to copy, and it was a total disaster. In fact, to this day, I still find myself hesitating to wear green eyeshadow because of that experience. Question number 10 is, what is your favorite makeup look that you've ever done? Well, two looks immediately spring to mind. One was a look I created with this mini eyeshadow palette from Natasha Denona called the Mini Lila Palette. I just absolutely adore these colors. And here's what it looks like. And the other was a look I created with this ColourPop palette called At Forest Sight, which was a collaboration that ColourPop did with a YouTuber by the name of Raw Beauty Christie. It was similar to this look. I actually rated this eyeshadow palette as my top eyeshadow pick for 2020 because of the quality of the formula, the amazing color story, and the pigmentation. And ColourPop products are such an amazing value for the price. The next question is, what is my favorite drugstore makeup product? Well, this is a really easy one for me. I can't do without this amazingly inexpensive product from Wet n Wild. It's their Cream Contour Stick in Wears Walnut. As you can see, it's so well loved that all the writing has worn off the case that it's in. This glides on so easily and blends out beautifully. And it's only $4.49 on the Wet n Wild site. Next up is question number 12, and it's what is your favorite splurge makeup product? Well, definitely for me, it's my Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes. I only buy them when they're on sale, so I only have these two larger palettes. This is the Sunrise palette, and this is the Tropic palette. But these are the ones that I have my eye on if and when they ever go on sale. The Biba palette, which is mainly mattes, the Glam palette, and the Metropolis palette. And I was so excited about her brand new palette, but instead of coming out with another of her $65 palettes, which have been incredibly popular, this most recent palette, which is stunning, is $129, and it's a limited edition palette. But aren't these colors absolutely amazing? It's called her new Circo Loco palette. Question 13 is, what is your most repurchased product? Well, it's definitely my Laura Geller French Vanilla Highlighter, which I use on my eyelids every time I wear eyeshadow. It's a product that you see me use in just about every video where I'm doing any kind of makeup demonstration. The French Vanilla is on the left, and Portofino, which is a shimmer shade, is on the right. The next question is, what is your earliest makeup memory? Well, it's definitely seeing my mother very carefully applying the only makeup she ever wore, 
powder and red lipstick. Now this is a black and white photo, but I can just see that red lipstick on her mouth when I see this picture. Question number 15 is where is your favorite place to shop for makeup? Now, how can any makeup lover not walk into a Sephora without smiling? But I have to say that my most vivid memory of walking into a Sephora store was on a trip with my husband and daughter. My daughter had studied abroad for a semester in Galway, Ireland, and we went over there to meet up with her after she finished her semester, and then we headed off to Paris. One of the first things that we did was to take that wonderful walk down the Champs-Élysées, and please excuse my French pronunciation. And we, of course, spied a Sephora store. Now, isn't this the most absolutely beautiful Sephora store you've ever seen? And notice the Gucci store on the left and the beautifully ornate Marriott Hotel on the right. What is the most underrated makeup product you own is the next question, and it's definitely my Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. It's also the second most repurchased product that I own, and I don't think I have ever heard anyone mention it on YouTube. It makes putting mascara on bottom lashes an absolute breeze. Now, I have no doubt that I'm going to get flack for my answer to this next question. It's what is the most overrated makeup product that you own? Now, please understand, this really boils down to personal preference, but I just can't get excited about Charlotte Tilbury's eyeshadows. They're definitely great quality, and they are beautiful, but I frankly find the color story to be fairly uninteresting. This palette has gotten rave reviews. It's her Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize palette, and it is just gorgeous, but I just don't find myself reaching for it because I just can't get that many different interesting eyeshadow looks out of it since there are only three matte eyeshadows. Since matte eyeshadows provide the basis for all of my eye looks, this palette just doesn't work as well for me. Now, I think all of us who are makeup lovers would answer this next question very passionately. It's what is a discontinued makeup product that you wish would come back? For me, it's absolutely this lip gloss from CoverGirl. It's called Lip Lava. And here's what it looks like. I love this lip gloss for several reasons. One, it has a brush applicator, which I find works so much better than a doe foot applicator for lip gloss. Second, the texture is perfect. And third, this is my perfect shade of lip gloss. I have yet to find another lip gloss that comes even close to this one, but I will keep searching. Question number 18 is where do you go for makeup inspiration? Well, there are other YouTubers I love to watch, including Allie Glines, Amy Loves Makeup for information on indie makeup brands, and Patty Alonzo, Mel Thompson, and Angela Bright for amazing eyeshadow looks. And I rarely miss a video from Emily Noel. I'm sure many of you are huge fans of hers as well. I think she's been on YouTube for 14 years now, and she's so down to earth, so delightful, and her enthusiasm is wonderfully contagious. Okay, only two more questions. Number 20 is what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? Now, this is really an easy one for me, and the answer is glitter eyeshadow. I love a good shimmer and a beautiful metallic, but actual glitter is not deemed eye safe, and our eyes are just too precious to take chances with. But of course, you have to understand that I'm especially passionate about this because I've had three eye surgeries. It seems like just about every eyeshadow palette that's come out this past year has had at least one glitter eyeshadow or more. I hope it's a trend that's waning. And the last question is another easy one for me. It's, what do you hope to see more of in the future of makeup? Well, for me, it's definitely more age, inclusivity, and visibility for older women, especially in cosmetic company website videos, in print and media ads, and in the choice of brand ambassadors. Unfortunately, it's still fairly rare to see older women in makeup ads and in videos on makeup company websites. But I do want to give a positive shout out to L'Oreal, which launched their Age Perfect makeup line for women over 50 in February of 2020. And their brand representatives were Jane Fonda and Helen Mirren. And they've recently also tapped Viola Davis, Celine Dion, 
Camila Cabello and Eva Longoria as representatives. And a shout out also to CoverGirl for their Simply Ages makeup line, which features 72-year-old model Mae Musk as their brand ambassadress. And also a shout out to Trini London. Well, that wraps things up for today. I thank you so much for taking time to join me, and I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You know, as I was going through these 21 questions, I imagined that many of you had fun thinking about what your answers would be. So in the comments section below, please let us know what some of your responses would be to any of these questions that you found most interesting. Until next time, I wish you good health and happiness and hope you have an absolutely fabulous rest of your day. Take care.